I wanted to gain a deeper perspective on the complexity of the conflict and how it all fits within the larger picture that is the Middle East. This is Avi Malamed, founder of Inside the Middle East Intelligence Perspectives, former IDF intelligence officer and expert on the Middle East. Big story of the Middle East. Israel is used as a pawn by both factors, meaning by the Mullah regime in Tehran, as well as by uh, Islamic factors in the Arab world in, their own, in the context of their inner political power struggle regarding the question of national state. We drove to the far reaches of Israel's Upper Galilee region, to a kibbutz situated not more than a mile from the Lebanese border. The cheers and laughter from children that once made up the soundtrack of life at Kibbutz Dafna have fallen silent, as all of the kibbutz's residents have been evacuated. The playgrounds are quiet, the markets are shuttered, and areas of the kibbutz are now off limits as they are within target range of Hezbollah. This is Arik. He is community leader at Kibbutz Dafna as well as a retired IDF officer of 25 years. The yellow building um, is, is the swimming pool of the kibbutz. Okay. It used to be once a movie theater. Oh, wow. Can't, you can't go beyond that yellow building because once you go beyond it, you are standing right in a front line in front of Hezbollah. Wow. And you could be hit by anti-tank missiles or whatever. That yeah. Was the a family-owned pasta restaurant. A local yoga studio. A chocolate museum. A community watering hole where fluttering pride flags are a stark reminder of happier days before the evacuation. But what would you say to someone who comes from where I come from, who doesn't understand the reality here, who doesn't get that this is transferable, you know, the, the, way, the way of life here is exactly the same as the way of life there. What would you say about your, your life here and your mm -hmm. right to be here to those people? Okay? <laughs> לכבוש <laughs> ולהיות איזה אימפריה או מעצמה קולוניאליסטית, אנחנו לא שם. וכשאתה משווה את זה רגע לאספירציות של הצד השני, אתה מבין שאנחנו בכלל לא משדרים על אותה ספירה. And I just want to stop for a second and kind of look at this neighborhood mm -hmm. and what we've just walked down, because I don't know if it's the weather and like the gray clouds and the looming threat of rain, but this looks very like some of the areas where I grew up in, in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. Today it does. I'm sure on a, on a sunny day it would never, but today mm -hmm. it does. And it's making me think about what it would feel like for me if I lived I grew up where I grew up and the most concerning things were a bunch of matters that had nothing to do with the potential of a mile down the road or up a hill being, uh, you know, resided by a, by a vicious threat that didn't want me and my family and the people I went to school with and my teachers and everyone else to not exist in that place. One of the major concepts that we are dealing with is the, is, 
is what we call the ring of fire. Mm -hmm. This is the Iranian master plan how to basically eliminate the state of Israel through the use of conventional weapons. And the concept of wheel of ring of fire that the Iranians have been working and developing is to create this network of proxies, Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, Iranian-backed militias in Syria, Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Gaza Strip, they will circle around Israel's neck, and in the time, when the time comes, they will all simultaneously operate together to attack Israel at one, as one, and from all different directions. Mm -hmm. So what we saw in October 7th was actually a, an example of the concept of unifying the arenas. It's called in Arabic, unifying the arenas, Wihadat mm -hmm. al-Sahat. And the concept was basically that when the day comes and there is this war, they are all going to be engaged in this war. But what happened on the ground was that Hamas launched that war, Islamic Jihad and Hamas launched that war from Gaza Strip on October 7, yet the other components of this ring of fire, meaning Hezbollah and other Iranian-backed militias, didn't really step in full scale into this war. In other words, Hamas and Islamic Jihad to a large extent find themselves alone facing Israel military might. You can understand that for Hamas and Islamic Jihad, this is a cause for anger because mm -hmm. they are very frustrated and disappointed with the fact that their colleagues did not join into the war. 